Today, we are talking pitching. Former twin Trevor Plouffe to do so. I am Alex Zappa. Any pitcher that has ever worn a twins jersey is up for grabs. We are drafting our playoff rotations. You only need three starters, a closer, and a setup guy. Everyone is on the table. Yesterday, we did infielders, Trev, and I thought there were three guys who were in contention for the number one overall pick. For pitchers, I think there's a clear-cut number one. I'm giving you the first pick. Are you going to take him? Is that how you see it? There is a clear-cut number one, and if you're looking for something during the playoffs, what you want your starter to do, basically you want your starter to go as long as he can, then hand it over to your good bullpen. We'll call it the closer in this case, or maybe not even hand the ball off. I'm going Walter Johnson. Wow. I mean, okay. just check out it. some of the statistics here. Please check out some of the statistics here. 165 Point one career war. Nobody comes close to that. This guy was averaging 274 innings per 162. His 110 career shutouts is still an all-time record. I mean, Burt Blylevin has some silly uh, innings pitch numbers, but nobody's got something like this. So I'm taking Walter with my number one pick. He's almost a cheat code when you look at his baseball reference, the amount of categories he led the baseball in. Trevor, that's a great pick. Again, uh, he was a senator, not necessarily a twin, but we'll go with it. My guy, how do you not go with Johan Santana, okay? And here's the thing with Johan Trevor. I didn't really know this was a thing, doing the research. Johan won the triple crown of pitching in 2006, which means he led the AL in wins, ERA, and strikeouts, three ERA titles, two Cy Youngs, a 93-44 and 44 record as a Minnesota twin. He made change-ups cool, which is frankly almost impossible um, Johan, number 57, the incredible goatee, really a part of the goatee staffs in the mid-2000 twins. Uh, a legend, a lefty, we all love him. How do you not pick him? I can't believe I'm getting Johan at the number two pick. Walter Johnson was incredible at number one. Who is the number three pick for you, Trev? By the way, Johan's still rocking the goatee. I just <laughs> saw him not too long ago. He looks great, by the way. I'm going to take a guy, and I actually have a prop for this pick right here. Okay, okay. I'm going reliever now. I'm going uh, with a guy who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, too, because he converted 89.13% of his saves, which is higher than Mariano Rivera, higher than Trevor Hoffman. I'm talking my guy, Joe Nathans. That's what we call him. 260 saves with the Twins. And after 255, when he set the record, we all got a big old mug. (laughs) Thank you. I'm sure you've never used it, you know? I've ha- I have drank beer out of this many times because <laughs> that's what it was for. So I'm taking him, Walter Johnson, to Joe Nathan. Game over. Wow. Okay, he goes relief pitcher early. That's some interesting strategy from you, Trevor Poof. I'll tell you what, Joe Nathan, you said it. His numbers are amazing. A few seasons with under a .9 whip, which is pretty much unheard of. You talked about the safe conversion. One of the most high-end twins ever and absolutely should be in the Hall of Fame. I think he'll get there. I'm going to stick with starters, and I can't believe, again, I'm getting this guy. Number two on my big board, Jim Cott, okay? He's in the Hall of Fame. He's a three-time All-Star. In 1966, he went 25-13 and with over 300 innings pitch. 16 gold gloves, okay? And he's second in Twins history and wins with 190 behind your boy, Walter Johnson. So, Jim Cott, I got a Hall of Famer. I got a future one in Johan Santana. I'm feeling great about my team, my relievers. I'm going to get to them. Trevor, I'm swinging it back around to you. Who do you got? I love it. I love that you left me this guy. I'm going oh. with another innings eater. Oh, who I no. just mentioned not too long ago. I'm taking Burt Blyden. Yeah, you are. Another <laughs> Hall of Famer. You're just leaving me all these Hall of Famers. Oh, 94 no. and a half career war. And again, you want, you're talking about guys that ate up innings. In uh, For his career <sighs> in 162 game average, he averaged 245 innings. Incredible. Pitched. Uh, there's not much that he can't do. Obviously, his twins lore is not just what he did on the baseball field, but he was in the broadcast booth as well. A great ambassador for the twins. I've had many uh, fun times with this guy. So I'm taking Walter Johnson and Burt Blyleving. I might not even need any relievers, but I got a couple good ones. You really don't. I mean, I don't know if Joe Nathan's going to get into the game with this stuff that you have. My favorite Burt Blyleving stat, 22 years in the MLB, nine seasons with a sub-3 ERA. So sometimes people think of him as a longevity guy, but he was elite at points as well. Um, I'm going to go reliever because I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious. I think my starters are great. I'm going with Rick Aguilera, okay? The guy was dominant in the World Series runs when we absolutely needed him. In 1991, 
42 saves helping that team get into the playoffs and get into that World Series. Only one earned run in eight innings pitched in the 91 playoff run getting into the World Series. And here's the deal. The guy was also a three-time All-Star. So when you talk about, yes, he was good for the Twins, but across the league, he also garnered that type of respect. All right, Trevor, we only got a few guys left. Who are you going with? I'm putting you back on the hot seat. I'm going to finish off my bullpen, and I'm going to go with another one of my buddies. And I love this story because I was with Glenn Perkins Ooh, in pick. AAA. Yep. We were doing midnight barbecues thinking about our futures and if we were going to be Major League Baseball players oh. again. And I remember he got a phone call from his wife, and she was kind of worried. He got sent down. I don't know if he wants me to share this, but I'm going to. We're Glenn. going to. That's what he, this is for. He said, he said, babe, I'm a lefty that throws over 90 miles an hour. We're going to be okay. He ends up making <laughs> the club the following year out mm -hmm. of spring training, basically out of necessity. And then he finds himself in that reliever role, and he began to shine. And he had like a three-, four-year stint there where he was – untouchable he closed the all-star game out there in 2014 at yes. target field to kurt suzuki and there were times where first of all he kind of he came out to a great uh walkout song if you will it's the johnny cash uh song and it was just great when he came in you knew the game was over unless he was facing carlos santana then you're like a little <laughs> sketched out about it but everyone else glenn was uh old reliable i'll call it so i love having him in my bullpen plus i have the righty with nathan and the lefty with glenn that's what i thought about while, while picking this guy it's not only his friend but he also made it strategically work for his roster glenn perkins three straight all-star game appearances and you talked about his stuff playing up 9.8 k per nine as a reliever during his career again he started as a starter 7.3 so once he got into that bullpen his stuff really 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 became electric I can't believe I'm getting this guy. Okay, I'm going back to starters. Can I get Jim Perry? Okay, I'm the Twins from 1964 to 1972. A Cy Young winner, one of only three in Twins history, Johan, Frank Viola, and also Jim Perry. Frank Viola somehow is not going to possibly get picked on this list. I don't know how that happened. He has two win titles as well, and he had a 60 win percentage for the Twins. A late bloomer as well, won his Cy Young in his age 30 for season, kind of came into his own post-20s. Uh, a Jim Perry, a guy that's maybe forgotten by someone in my generation, maybe yours, but an OG that I want to bring to the forefront. So I'm done with starters. I need one more reliever. Trev, I think you're done with relievers. You have one more starter. I got two guys left on my big board. Who are you picking? I want someone I can rely on in a postseason appearance. And we're talking about a guy here that might have been the most reliable pitcher in Twins history. We're talking Brad Radke here. <laughs> He averaged 34 board. starts, 34 starts for 162. He was taking the ball every single day. He's going to give you an ERA plus over 110, sometimes around 120. You just knew what you were going to get when oh he got gosh. the ball, and that's exactly what I want when I'm making my postseason roster. I got my guys here, but Brad's going to have the – the reliability factor that you're going to have. And he had some success. He has MVP 25, a Cy Young 3, an All-Star game. The accolades are there, but for me, it's more about the reliability that Brad brings to my rotation, and that's my team. Brad Rackey was my favorite player growing up. I cannot disagree with that pick. Camilo Pesqual does not get picked. Frank Viola doesn't get picked. You talk about Francisco Liriano, maybe the best half season ever in Twins history in 2006. He started that All-Star game. David Getz, Kevin Tapani, Scott Erickson, not picked on the all-time great playoff list. Okay, I got one reliever. I'm going with Eddie Gordado. He's still with the organization. Yeah. The lefty was incredible. He made two straight all-star games, 45 and 41 saves in those 2 3 seasons. He led baseball with 45 saves in 2002. I mean, he's Eddie Gordado. What can you say? Had a nice 10-year run, really came into his own for a four-year stretch, but someone who the fans loved – he had a presence to him that you had to respect. Trevor, you got some old school guys. You got some new school guys. I absolutely love your list. Now, you got to go watch a game. I'm going to watch it as well. He is Trevor Plouffe. I am Alex Zappa. And there are your all-time great Twins playoff rotations.